Well, thank you. And first, let me uh, thank and congratulate uh, the uh, Center for Common Ground for your visionary uh, decision to engage in this international, national uh, effort <laughs> to fight against voter suppression. Uh, Madam Co-Chair and all of you who prayed and sung and collaborated to make this happen, uh, I offer to you my congratulations and really just my heartfelt thanks. Uh, uh, first and foremost, uh, here in Georgia, uh, we've spent the last three weeks, really, two in particular, celebrating the life of a living legend, which is Congressman John Lewis, yes. uh, who gave his life to ensure that all people, particularly black people and others, all people of color, have equal access uh, to the voting booth. And in the face of a, really a national effort, very intentional and purposeful, to suppress the vote of people of color, poor people, uh, we must not grow weary in our good doings. And one of the things that Congressman Lewis is famous for, and I've heard him tell me on multiple occasions, that we should not uh, lose the opportunity to get in good trouble whenever we had a chance. And fighting to assure equal access to the voting booth, to being registered, and to participating in the democratic process is the best good trouble any of us on this call or in our lives can participate in. Whenever you are in a political jurisdiction where there is an intense struggle for power, which we are now in this nation and in the South in particular and other states around this country, where dispossessed people or people who have been without power began to, through demographic evolution and shifts, place themselves in a position where they have access to power. Forces who hold those reins of power will engage in a systemic effort to limit access, to dilute power, and to do whatever's in their arsenal to suppress the vote. This is not by happenstance, it is strategic. It is planned and quite frankly, we need to approach it in a way where we cannot afford to fail. Here in Georgia, uh, three weeks ago, we had what has been described as an election meltdown. Uh, we had a Republican Secretary of State who in majority African-American precincts throughout Metro Atlanta and other parts of Georgia uh, intentionally in many ways sought to prohibit and restrict and dilute African-American voters. Here in DeKalb County, we're the most democratic county in the state of Georgia. We have 750,000 residents. Uh, I'm the elected CEO of DeKalb County. And we are fighting, and we just had a runoff, and I went, met with my board of uh, elections. The first thing we recognize is that the Secretary of State had purchased a new voting system, very complex system that, quite frankly, was outlawed in Texas, believe it or not, and we're using it here in Georgia. So our election chair, Sam Tillman, we're recruiting much younger poll workers to assist us in our polling places because these are very complicated electronic touch machine voters. So we are recruiting much younger voters to be poll workers on election day. I've deployed my IT department to ensure that the polling places can actually support the new machinery. Many of the polling places are older and they have obsolete electrical wiring or not enough bandwidth to support the system. So now we are doing deep evaluation prior to November to make sure these polling places can support the technology that's been deployed. And the last thing, and we'll talk about other things in particular, the CAB received $125 million in CARES Act funding because of COVID-19. Uh, we intend to provide hazard pay for all poll workers because what we found was that many senior citizens, because African-Americans in general and 
seniors in particular are disproportionately impacted by the virus. We had to then come up with a strategy where poll workers had to choose between their health and their life and working on election day. So we have to take steps, number one, to recruit a, a different cadre of workers and advocate because these men and women who serve as poll workers are literally putting their health on the line because they become forward-facing public servants. So those are three things I mentioned, and uh, I'll come back, Ms. Gabrella, and talk in more detail. But thank you so much for inviting me, but more importantly, thank you all for having the vision to have the discussion and develop the strategy so that we can implement and make a difference on election day.